Hey guys, this is Jeff with Tenacore. Today we are going to talk about a really emotionally important topic to a lot of people, which is weapon mounted lights. I have been carrying a gun and using a weapon mounted light or a handheld light for over 20 years, so from the early 2000s. When I started carrying a gun, LEDs did not really exist in the marketplace, so I started with a Surefire 6P with an incandescent P60 bulb in it, um, maybe 65 lumens. I also had another handheld light, which was a Surefire Executive Series. Again, it was like a 100 or so lumen incandescent bulb. My first rifle lights were all incandescent, either the classic series rifle lights or like the M900 series with a 125 lumen high output bulb or a 225 lumen with 20 minutes of runtime. Getting closer to 2005, 2006, LEDs started to come on the market. Most people started with like a, some sort of generic Cree China made bulb that they would throw into their Surefire G2 or their Surefire 6P and those worked okay. And then a company, Malkoff, came on the market with kind of a US made LED alternative that was more high impact. It was designed more for weapon mounted lights. Early on there, as far as a weapon mounted pistol light goes. Insight Technologies had I think like their M1 or M3 or M3X lights and those worked okay. Again those were incandescent and they were not high output lights and so if you're comparing the 60 100 lumen lights of a couple decades ago to the 1200, 1500 plus lumen lights of today, there's really no comparison. Ultimately what a light needs to do though, is it needs to illuminate the thing that you are trying to identify to see whether you need to shoot it or not. And all of the other things are helpful things, but that's kind of like the base foundational thing that you want a light to do. And those lights, even with their poor output and poor runtime, were force multipliers and worked way better than not having the light. The first LED weapon mounted light that I used was a Surefire X200B, I think it was, and I used that as my SWAT gun for a while. You know, everything kind of became an LED, whether it was a Surefire, eventually the Surefire X300 series came out, Streamlight and the TLR1 had been out for a bit, and they came out with the TLR1 HL, so getting more output. Streamlight did a pretty good job of keeping up with kind of the output race. And so they're adding lumens, adding candela to it. And speaking of lumens and candela, if you want to go super nerd and get into your big debates about lumens and candela and all that stuff, there's tons of videos out there about that. We're not going to talk about that today. Um, you can go nerd out about your candela and come up with your calculations and whatever and do that thing. Um, on your own. Some sort of illumination tool is essential to carrying a gun. So the starting point would be a handheld light. You have to have some sort of handheld light. Secondary to that would be a weapon mounted light. You need to be able to identify your target if you're going to shoot something. If you believe something's a threat, a lethal threat, and you feel you, your life is in danger or the people's lives you care about that you're sworn to protect, you need to be able to identify that target clearly. And in low or no light situations, some sort of illumination tool is a requirement. Some people are just going to want to carry a weapon mounted light, but you shouldn't be searching for your keys or for some Legos or whatever is the thing with your or your dog with a weapon mounted light. You should have a handheld light. And so the handheld light can do both your administrative tasks and it can do your tactical tasks. The weapon mounted light should only do your tactical tasks. Um, and that's because it's attached to your gun and anything you point the light at, you're pointing the gun at. So the weapon mounted light works really well to have two hands on the gun and to illuminate your threat or potential threat. And that is where it shines. It doesn't work well for other things. The handheld light um, works well to illuminate all of the other things and works okay for illuminating your threat or your potential threat. Usually it's going to put you in some sort of compromised shooting position. So that is the balance between those two things. So with any light, whether it's a handheld light or a weapon mounted light, having a brighter light is better. Just like you should carry the biggest, most shootable gun you can carry, which for some people might be a Glock 43. For other people, it might be a Glock 17. You should also carry the biggest usable light that you can carry. So for some people, that is a Surefire X300 Ultra. For other people, it is a Streamlight TLR7 Sub. And the same thing with a handheld light. For some people, the largest handheld light they can carry is going to be some 9-volt mod light with like 8 billion candela and 
three million lumen. For other people, it's gonna be a Streamlight MicroStream. And the 300 lumens out of the MicroStream can illuminate most of the things you're gonna to need to illuminate. How big and bulky of an item are you willing to carry on a regular basis? The idea that you're gonna to go to the range all the time and train with basically these big, huge lightsabers and then never carry those things, right? I mean, it, it, there's a time and a place to do that and you should do that and if you have fun doing that, do that. But you also need to make sure that you're gonna put time and energy and resources into training with the stuff you're normally gonna carry. So if you have your big, huge mod light and your Surefire X300U, and that's the thing you always train with, but the reality is you're always carrying your Streamlight macro stream and no light on the gun, but you never put time and energy into training that in diminished light. You should reevaluate your training priorities and put emphasis more into the thing you're normally gonna use and not in the thing that makes you feel good. Most of the people that I know that for an extended period of time professionally carried a gun in a concealed manner, most of them don't carry a weapon mounted light. Most of them just carry a handheld light. So that is food for thought. Um, most of the people out there that you think of as like the awesome instructors, many of those people who advocate carrying some sort of big, huge, bright weapon mounted light on their gun are probably people who spent a lot of time doing tactical things and not concealment things. So they were on a SWAT team or they were some sort of assaulter and they didn't spend a lot of time doing concealed stuff. The reality is the gun with the bigger light is just harder to conceal. And I know for a lot of people that is a really difficult thing to hear because they want that gun that is so big and looks so cool with all the slide cuts and the big huge red dot and the big huge light and the big huge magwell and then the five or 10 round plus magazine and you have this big huge laser gun um, and it looks really cool but it is harder to conceal. If you can conceal it, then do that, right? The bigger the gun, the easier it is to shoot, the bigger the light, the more you can illuminate, the better it is. So do that if you can conceal it. But the reality is the larger thing is more difficult to conceal. So for handheld lights, the lights that I really like are the USB rechargeable stream lights. So the macro stream is the light that I normally carry. It's 500 lumens. It is bright enough to do most anything I want it to do. The other one would be the tan micro stream. So if you want an even smaller light that doesn't look like a thing that's tactical at all. I mean that light at 300 lumens is way better than the stuff that I started with at 65 lumens or whatever. But it works and it does the job. It is low profile, it is easy to carry, it doesn't look like a tactical light at all. From there you can obviously scale up. There's a bunch of Surefire lights that work really well. The Mod Light, the Cloud Defense, there's a whole bunch of lights out there that work really well. A lot of those are bigger and bulkier so you just got to make sure that you're, you're set up to carry that sort of light. As far as recommended gun lights go, the Surefire X300s work great. That being said, I carried a Surefire X300 for about three or four years and I broke it about once a year and that was in patrol and on SWAT and then I switched over to the Streamlight TLR1 and I stopped breaking lights. And so the Surefire seems like a light that is more durable and robust. Streamlight seems like a light that is more chintzy and not as durable. My anecdotal experience is that the Streamlight actually works better. I think either one are great. Both companies are gonna have good warranties, so if you do have problems with one, you probably can get it replaced. So either one of those lights for a full-size duty light. And if you're able to conceal carry a full-size duty light, then do that. If you can't, or you're and you want to still carry a weapon-mounted light, it's pretty tough to beat the Streamlight TLR7A or the Streamlight TLR7 Sub. At this point, I think I'd probably go with the Sub just because it's a little smaller light and lower, smaller footprint, easier to carry. And it really it has similar amount of power, um, lumens and candela and all that. And so I think that would be my inclination would be to go with a TLR7 Sub as a concealment light. So another thing to evaluate with regard to carrying lights is what sort of other accessories are compatible. As soon as you go out and you get some weird gun and some weird light, you combine them together, can you find a holster that works for that? If you can't, then it's gonna be really hard to conceal it and carry it. So I would maybe start with what holster, what holster style, holster brand, which one works well for you and conceals well and carries well, and then what options do they support? So if the company, the company like Tenacore, we don't support a ton of different things because most of our customers are Glock 
and Streamlight for Surefire users. And so we have support for the most of those things. So in conclusion, carry a handheld light, and if you can, carry a weapon mounted light. Carry the largest light that you are actually going to carry on a consistent basis and then train with that thing. Thanks for watching. Please go check out some of our other videos here and here and here and here.